grand finals. Amazing. Come on. That's how it, that's, that's it. That's the next gen finals for the future. Do it now. Do it now. No, no, it wasn't Leheshka. It was someone else. It was someone else. That's how you make the next gen finals epic. All right. A to B, you take that one for free. Okay. Anyways, I don't know how we got on this road, but um, yeah, you're on the road for too long. I'm just, so, I'm hyped. All right, I'm, I'm ready for the we'll next talk match. About I'm excited. Else. We'll get there eventually. We still got like four hours. Cam just won the uh, Australia just won the cricket. Goddamn right, we did. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a pathway. So the next gen finals is introducing the young guys. That the, the Grand Slam champions of the juniors are the next guys. They're supposed to be anyway. Give them a platform. And the ADB Next Gen Finals is the platform you should give them. Add ranking points? Well, that's a whole nother thing. I mean, we can do that too. All right. World Cup Final for Australia. Let's go. Um, all right, Chad, I'm out of here because I feel like, uh, look. Hello. Call ended. <laughs> We're going to get back on track of the... All right, William. It's very quiet. Um, let me see. What do you mean quiet? I don't, I don't know that it's on my end, but it could be. All right, now it sounds louder, maybe. Is it okay? Now it sounds unclear. How's that sound? Better? Perfect, perfect. All right, so we've got the voice, the vision, the victor. Okay, you ready? This is not the buy sells, our opinion, blah, 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 in case anyone's listening. All right, a friend of mine just called up. He was buying some finger. He said a hedge fund guy called him up and said that uh, – He's hearing that the short sellers are reaching out to people, to someone to write another stupid story about the stock. And the hedge fund guy said to my buddy, he goes, I'm not betting against the finger. That's what he said. He goes, these guys are, these guys are trapped. That was a hedge fund guy telling my friend who's buying the stock. All right. So I just got a little tip. I put it up there that the shorts, I told you Wall Street's a small place and uh, it pops up at different places. All right. So again, I, I referred it to uh, Mark Bazile. I will refer it to law enforcement later. And just to let them give them a heads up that we're watching short and distort or an attempt to short and distort in real time. That tells you how desperate these guys are to get this stock to go down. They need to cover. They're exposed. I, I believe law enforcement is definitely going to put pressure on these characters if they're trapped. All right. So I can get. The person who just called me up, if I have to get assigned that for David, I can get him and give up the guy who told him. So, again, we're not just making this shit up. We, we're going to get these characters. All right. So there you go on that front. Uh, the GTI front, uh, there was some news with Wes. I don't know the outcome, what that's about. But remember, the focus has always been on Alpine. Alpine is the prime broker. Of the elite. There. Alpine's looting and helping people loot. That is the key. The market makers are not carrying these positions. They're passed up to the, you know, to offshore accounts. Okay, so I've always believed that that was the attack. But again, I can't tell the lawyer what to do. He represents the company. He works for the company, not me. And I don't speak to him, so I, you know, you can't get information because these are public companies and it's material information and all. Everything has to go back to the companies. I said that about seventy-five times. All right. On the next case, I'm back to finger motion. The volume is 115,000, super light, always, always trying to maintain it just down a penny, keeping it red. There is zero selling. All right. Last night I was on Ace's call. He had 500, 600 people there too. Everybody understands what's going on. I recapped everything. And uh, so again, everybody knows what's going on. And the reason, again, this is the best play ever is because of short selling fraud. And again, 
once this works, we all know where we're going into GTII, and that'll make, if those guys continue to keep trying to hold it down, that'll make it better because it's a cheaper stock, and that'll add more fuel to the fire. So that's the playbook. We're not going away. Uh, you know, Mark Bazile knows. I texted him. I copied him on what I heard. All right, so when he speaks to the Southern District, uh, when he's exposing Capabara and those criminals, I guess we'll have more information that we we got a tip off of a, another attack that they're trying to do. All right. Again, this will only add more time in, in, the, in jail sentence when they're caught. All right. Because when criminals get caught like a rat, they can't, they got to fight their way out of a corner. That's what they always say. And this is what they do. They think they can never lose and then they're going to get away with it forever. Well, this is a different, thanks to William, this is a different fight. And like William says, we're not going away. And again, I spoke to law enforcement yesterday, I spoke to law enforcement two days before. I'm educating them all on it. They're all not experts on naked short selling. They understand pump and dumps. They understand shorting. But this they don't understand altogether. They hear about it, but they're getting their earful now. I gave them six pages each of information. And they both know that I'm working with each other. So again, they, they have to decide who wants to take control of this. That's up to them. All right. But again, so again, what else can I say? I, there's law enforcement here. Uh, you know, we're waiting for the company to make some noise whenever they do it. And we're standing here and there's no selling. There's no selling. Zero. I don't know what to tell you people. Stocks that have no selling, like NVIDIA, go up 100 points. Stocks that have no selling, like Tesla, bounce off and they, after the attacks, they go back up $30, $40. This is what happens. All right. I posted about CVM. CVM's been acting great. Great, excuse me. And what did they do? They raised a couple of million dollars at two bucks and they take the momentum out of the stock. Again, they need to raise money to fight cancer. That's what the problem is. No one gives them a chance. So raising money destroys their market cap, destroys shareholder value. And it's only because the guys went on the run up, William, up to $3 yesterday, they were shorting it because they know they're going to buy it back at two. Nice trade, right? It's William. always the same stupid pattern. There you go. It's always tied. The big shorts are tied to funders. And Mark Bazil put up something about he just won a case with something LG, I think it was. I posted it. But Mark also put in the thing, he put a little line. Only registered, only registered. I don't want to quote it. Let me see if I can find it. Mm -mm -mm. I'm sorry, I'm just looking for the quote. I don't want to say something that he said basically is the uh, people that can only sell shares in the marketplace are registered brokers. And uh, these guys, none of them fit that. And they're all unregistered toxic lenders. They shouldn't be allowed. They're not allowed by law to be anything part of the stock market, yet they all been selling stock into the marketplace as unregistered broker dealers. And I'm sorry I can't find the exact thing that Mark said. Hold on a second. Let me give you one more chance here. One second, one second. Oh, here it is. Only individuals and firms that are registered can sell securities into the public. And that is, he put a, he put a little thing, broker check called Lincoln Park. So he actually checks to see if they're a broker dealer. And when they come back and said that there's no one under that name that's a registered broker dealer. And that's how Mark is catching all these guys. Because they're all, all right, that's the loophole on the long side, how to catch these criminals, all right? That they don't want to register. Okay, I spoke with Mark about this a long time ago. I'm just, hopefully I get it correct. They don't register because if they register, everything they do would have to be seen. That's why they don't register as, as brokers because they, are, they act in the shadows. But now they're being forced. So again, either they're forced or any of these toxic loans that they do uh, are, are just 
eliminated and the companies can sue for damages, get back their money. And that's why I think GTI should go after the Kramers, Lint, the Finger Motion Lint, Bragg Lint, SYTA Lint, Wolf should go after Yorkville. And they should, anyone who deals with any company that has doing business with a toxic lender, even CBM, I don't know who they did their deal with, reach out to Mark Brazil, let them go, let them do that little uh, check for you and go after them. It's a cheap way, different way to go after the naked short selling. Go right after the lenders, okay? The broker dealers, the market makers, they're not selling the stock. They're just doing it on behalf of the hedge funds offshore, all right? So attacking them, I don't believe there's the way to go. I think Mark is doing it the right way. I think Wes has to do it as a long play and going after the broker dealers, not the market makers. All right, that's what I think. It's I think that's the way to go. But I'm not an attorney, so I'll leave it to the attorneys. But I like the way Mark is attacking this thing and exposing them for being unregistered uh, broker dealers, and they have no right to do any executions in the marketplace. These guys have been operating without a license in the equity markets. Everybody who's a broker, William, did you have a license? Did you have a Series Seven? I did. You shouldn't have one. Why? Why should you have one? No one else needs one. Only you need one. Right. Everybody else is operating without one. I'm sure it's so Lynn they partners, can. Lynn Partners is operating as a broker dealer, doing whatever they want with no license at all. Totally unregistered. Well, it says in the document the CEO signs that they're not a registered dealer. At least that's the Kramer's document. You agree that I'm not act we're not acting as a securities dealer. It's all fraud. It's all it's all it is. They try to, it's like, you know, what is it? The old shell game. They're trying to, they, they change documents and they, they word it. The people need the money and they don't care. And that's what's going on. And that when you sign the paper, they walk out laughing because they already got all their money back and then some. I think Mark B B Bazile has another interesting twist for me. You're probably going to say, ah, oh, no, nah, don't worry about that. But I think he intends to notify Wall Street when these let's call them toxic notes slash warrants are retired or removed so that the back offices know they should stop taking our orders to sell non-existent shares. I think yeah, it's well, listen. what should happen here is if they're caught, they should be arrested. First, they get sanctioned for being an unregistered broker dealer. The next attempt is they're trying to break, you know, do fraudulent activity. They should be they should be arrested, and anyone who takes the orders for them should be dragged in with them. All right, know your client. That's the game. Know your client. Number one rule. All right. All right. So I've been on the phone for whatever it was. And we had a total of like twelve hundred shares trade, and they mark it down. Always oh, on the downside. Mark it down. Mark it down. Mark it down. On single motion. All right. Again, I I already blew the whistle on whether it's a rumor that the short is spreading tell the people to get people to sell and attack it but again i guess the people that are you know if there is a problem if any law enforcement wants to know i know the gentleman who will sign an affidavit saying that's what he was told so again not making it up this is this is information that's passed around and i wanted you guys all to know i put it up as soon as i heard it so again the short the short campaign the DOJ, these are this is low hanging fruit. These characters, they stick out like a sore thumb. Um, right? Yeah. I I I printed it out. I'm going to read it to you, or part of it. But uh, Senator John Kennedy just came out against something that the SEC is is moving forward with. And I wonder your reaction, because um, uh, what it is, is the SEC is demanding from brokerage firms to know who their customers are, what their name is, all the details, birth date, uh, tax ID number, what stocks they bought and sold during the year. And John Kennedy's point is it's a violation of privacy 
But I wonder if this is a, a methodology for the SEC to track uh, counterfeit shares being sold from abroad. I don't know. I wonder your opinion. Uh, you probably haven't seen that news. And I'll so the read SEC it. The SEC wants to get the information on every every company. account, every person, what stocks they bought and sold during the year, what's their birthday, what's the name of their wife. What about it, hedge funds? What about those? Companies? Well, I don't know that answer. Um, let me well, get listen, as far as a retail. I could give a rat's ass what they what I buy I, and sell. I couldn't I care. Less. I don't care. But if it's if it's what you're saying, they're trying to track the bad guys, then they need to put in that statement that everyone who trades in the U.S. equity markets, whether they're offshore or onshore, we need to know who they are. That's this was thing. in the Washington Examiner this morning, and SEC's consolidated audit trail is a disaster waiting to happen, according to, according to Senator John Kennedy. But I'm seeing it slightly differently. Um, he says the SEC is supposed to protect investors, not stalk them. However, under new regulation, the SEC has paved the way for the agency to follow and investors every move. They want the customer's full names, birth years, addresses, which stock they bought and sold, and when those transactions occur. Well, everyone who has an account at a brokerage firm, that's the information they take from them. So what the fuck did they, you know, just go to a brokerage firm? Well, it would be nice. um, well, to, he says in the account. past you had to subpoena it for it. Uh, oh, okay. But... In its own words, the SEC wants to, quote, efficiently and accurately track all activity throughout the U.S. markets, unquote, every single transaction. I wonder if this is a way to go after this offshore criminality. Oh, if we're not going to include their information, what... What, what it doesn't they, say that. It doesn't address that. I don't know if they're including. So if, they don't if this is just activity. addressed to retail, so what? But if it's every account, it might be a big deal. Listen, I'm sure they're trying to find a way to shut this down because it's coming. This is this is going to be exposed. So if that's a way to slow down the offshore, you know, attacks, so be it. I, you know. What do you care if you buy? They see you bought, you know, GTI, Finger, XMI, whatever the hell you're buying. Who cares? See, no. his angle is it's a disregard for privacy. I understand that, but it might be. I'm this is what I'm wondering. Might be a way to track everything to catch the um, the like, why criminals. Why do they need to know who the hell's buying? or whatever. Well, that's it. They don't know. When you send money if selling from the pipes from Germany or the UK, you don't know who the seller is. That's a that's a violation, for example, what you said of the know, know your customer rule. Just off the top of my head. I don't know. Anyway. They need to shut down this, they need to shut down this offshore loophole with these characters coming through the Caymans. Central America, South America. We don't know. No one knows what the hell's going on. They should just. So you, so you have to put a ring around your stock. I think Finger Motion has done a great job of putting a ring around it. So, you know, everybody, everyone who's been part of this, spreading the word on Wall Street. Everyone on Wall Street knows about it. And that's what the short sellers, their fear is that once this gets momentum, like GameStop, once the final dagger comes out, whatever that may be, whether it's corporate news, investing, something, this thing will never stop. So the company's worth, the company's worth based on benchmarks report before the last revenue quarter, which was doubled, was $5. What's the race to try to sell it down? There is no race. The valuation is much higher. I told you we have a, uh, a seasoned IR guy he said the value of the company is between 8 and 10 based on the last revenue. Not for, I, not for me. I, I'm not a uh, fundamental guy, but that's what he told us. And you're not so seasoned. What's the, so what's the race to hurry up and sell 1,000 shares 
at 488. Hurry up, sell it out for me. There is no, everybody understands it. And that's why there's no selling. The only sellers are the manipulators. Yesterday it was 60 something percent. Again, I forgot the number six. Whenever there's real buying in the stock and it's ready to take off, that's when the naked short number goes up. When it's very quiet and you see big volume, you know they're washing it if it's in the same spot. It's very easy to see the patterns. Except for Richard, it's not legal advice. He seems to get lost in it. He only knows one he pattern. He had a good joke last night about a boxer. I forgot. He forgot the punchline, and then he came out with it. I can't remember. It was a good one, Richard. In the corner stands a boxer, a fighter. Yeah, no, I forgot. I forgot the. He, he actually said he forgot the punchline, then he remembered it, and it was it was a good joke. So I just it was about a boxer. I forgot. I forgot the whole thing. So if Richard is up, if he wants to give you the joke, we can type it to you. So he's you one sir. hilarious guy. That's for sure. That's it. <laughs> Listen, he does a great job. He's very calming to me. I like watching him. And, uh, you know, Ace drives me a little crazy. He's so high strung. I can't handle it. Yeah, he talks very quietly and never gets <laughs> upset. He never gets upset. He's, hey, Ace, the whole He's house unflappable. He really is. Ace, your house is on fire. Okay, it'll put itself out. No problem. That's the type of guy he is. <laughs> it's great. He does a great job. He does a yeah, great job. Call for him. Him. Are you calling uh, me? But uh, any other questions? Um, uh, we're sitting here watching paint drive today. I gave you the scoop. You know, we're waiting for the company to make noise. The market's selling off after the quick squeeze up every day up. I yeah. had a I had one, but I can't remember it. Um, yeah, I can't remember it. Let me see what. Let me go to the bottom of the page. All right. Might as well ask you. Everyone's focused on it. Uh, what oh, news hi. What news is coming out before the 17th tomorrow about Finger? Capital letters shouting out loud. What is the news that, you know, the insider news that is would be a violation of Reg FD, if they disclosed it to you personally instead of the world, what is the news, Sam, coming out by tomorrow? Well, the news is that it's, it's uh, what you call, uh, what do you call it, fair disclosure. So I don't know the news. And I heard that there was a news coming out. The company never told me anything. And I'm sitting here waiting like you. I'm not trading anything. I'm not doing anything. What would you like me to say? What's the news? I What's up you with heard. the 17th? Is it still That's a thing? Tomorrow. Is it is it still a thing? That's Why the question. I so I just told you I heard that the shorts are trying to prepare another short attack. They want people to write a report. I heard that too. So that's the same thing as that what I heard in fingers. It's the same as what I told you what I heard. Decipher it where you may be. If I knew the story, I'd tell you. If if I was out here saying, Hey, I'm going to buy a lot of stock before the news comes out, you can say, Hey. That's that's not that's not legal. It's got to be fair disclosure. I got it. I know. I'm talking to the FBI and the Secret Service, Dumbo. You think I'm sitting here going to trade on inside information if I had it? What are you, are you a bird? Um, G I don't know the news. Mark Bazile commented based on the, stock, based on the stock, not even trading. Nobody knows what's going on. So what can I tell you? I have no clue. A but anyway, the big mouth that just said that. You know, obviously he's a stooge because that's a stupid quote. They can running around with inside it's it and it's fair disclosure. That's a stooge. Block that idiot. All right. Raka S. Mark Bazile commented, I guess on Twitter, she, do, she doesn't say, that the GTII lawsuit was dropped attributable to Rule 11, lack of support. Do, Ham, are you have any help on this? It's first time I've heard this. Uh, no, I don't. I don't. Again, I until someone tells me, I have no idea what happened. I'm not an attorney. I'm not in a courtroom. Yeah. I have no clue. Maybe he has a different angle. It's something I could think of. I, you know, my angle was always go after Alpine. It's it's standing right there in black and white. <laughs> Alpine is the criminal, the prime broker that is allowing the Kramers and everyone else, the gatekeeper, to fraud. That's the that's the spot. The DTC told you everybody's suing them. 
you know, maybe that's the way he decided he wants to go. I, I don't know much about courts. Can you, can it get withdrawn, put back? I have no idea. Okay, this I'm gentleman is concerned that he's still, I, I think he's received GTII shares. He doesn't understand that when there's a legend on the shares, you can't trade them, you can't price them. But he, anyway, he still does has not does not have his GTII shares. He wrote the SEC. Thank you for writing the SEC. Yes, thank you. Um, uh, uh, by the way, I didn't buy a zillion shares, but I did buy GTI yesterday, and I can give you the prices I paid for it. And this is how I know they're still shorting it. You ready? Yeah. Let me see the prices here. I bought it at 0.519. That was a short sale. Then I bought more and I paid 0.51916, another short sale. Then I bought again and I paid 0.5242, another short sale. And then I bought again and they sold to me 51195 more. So there's an example that the shorts are still shorting because every time I tried to buy it, I tried to take the 53 or the 52 offering, and that's what I got back. So that tells you no one sells in those numbers. Those are the shorts shorting in front of it. So that's who's selling the stock. They're naked shorting it still at those numbers. Um. So check on that and GTI I story. If I bought it yesterday, what knowledge did I have of Wes's lawsuit? Zero. I'm not doing it. I'm doing it just like you. I had some extra money. I said, let me buy some. That's what I did. That's uh, it. That's how it goes. But you um, have you have bozos trying to make make an example that we have inside information, William. Yes, we, we're all loaded. We have real inside information. We're, we're, we're making a fortune here. We actually call the feds, people that arrest people on inside information. Does anyone know that the FBI arrests people on insider trading? Does anyone know that? Oh, really? Okay, yeah. So I'm going to sit here and waste my time buying a thousand shares of finger to get arrested for insider trading. That's what I just what I want to do. Okay, great. Um. I got to check this. You look up Goober Gary Gensler. Apparently he's up for secretary of the treasury. I don't know. That's something I've been predicting. Um, no, he's not. So that's, that's bad news. Thank you, uh, Mitchell Wong, very much. Um, let's see. Let's see. Uh, this Michael says, good morning, guys. Can't thank you enough for your diligent and hard work. Well, thank you very much for that quote. And the opposite of that is the scumbags that post that are trying to think that they're going to upset us and accuse us of criminal activity. Meanwhile, they sit here and they represent the criminals. He has an idea them. that I happen to like. Um, his idea is why don't we put a full page ad in the Washington Post I thought about that, but it's like fifteen thousand dollars. And then now, as soon as they do the first issue, phone calls will come into the liberal uh, bought Washington. You know, it's Bezos owns it; he'll take it out. But we could I do it maybe the in the Examiner or in the Washington Times, or well, if anybody wants to go about it and try to get the ads for a page ad in one of those places, you know. I'll, I'll help raise the funds for it. So if you can get someone wants to do the legwork on that, I'm not great at doing that. If you get the, you know, the whatever day it be, we want it on a weekday, maybe a weekend, a weekday, whatever day's best. And we'll take a full page ad out and we'll we'll throw everybody under the fucking bus. I can't believe it's 15 grand. So much money. I think the New York Post was pretty cheap. I think that was pretty cheap. Because <laughs> only conservatives read it. Uh, no, listen, it's the New York Post turned into a like a English newspaper. All it is is pictures of. Well, girls. they yeah, it's. I actually read the Daily Hate, the Daily Mail, 
and it's the same news. The Daily Mail comes maybe half a day sooner, but the New York Post, it's all, it must be all owned by Murdoch. I don't know, but I'm just saying it's got, it, it, it went from being a local New York paper to being like a trashy, you know, there's always pictures of girls in bikinis. And it, it's like, it's like that newspaper that was in the UK or the Star or the Inquirer it turned into something like that. Well, yeah, we used to go to the supermarket and there was always that stupid paper, the Star or the Inquirer. I can't remember which one it was. It was always there. Uh, Ronald. Avid, I don't know if he's real or not, first time I saw his name, but he's saying it's nice to see that Univest turned out to be a total farce, 100%. Well, I don't think it's over yet, but if you want to call it over now, just get out of the stock and then stop worrying about it. The stock, you know, the fingers up from about a dollar, low, low dollars this year, even at these prices, it's a huge run for the year. So just get out, Ronald. But I don't think Univest is over with by any means. Several of the stocks that that had short squeezes under Univest, it one I can't remember them all. One took 10 months, one took 12 months, one took eight months from the time Univest was signed up. So get out whenever you want. Oh, you know what, people, uh, I don't know how Univest operates, but it's their money, they're a banker, it's their business, and it's their, what they want to do. They're not here to help us. I said no, that a thousand no, times. No. People don't understand that. These guys are in business for themselves, to make money for themselves. I just don't understand why Finger Motion would hire a banker and to do nothing. So that, to me makes everything we're all, you guys are all talking about doesn't make any sense because obviously they're here to do something. What day they unleash and make it happen, I don't know. But again, that's I have no idea. Well, I, I think it's unreasonable. I know, I know what I'm going to do tonight. I just thought of it. I'm going to go to a Chinese restaurant and see if there's a information in my fortune cookie after I have dinner tonight. And see what, and maybe I can get the information there. I can tell them, hey, I know Univest. Give me the good fortune cookie. Well, I, I just think that Finger Motion has built a terrific franchise over the last eight or nine years. They do it deliberately, carefully. They cross the T's, dot the I's. They do all the filings correctly. Their audit trail is pristine. And They've built a great relationship with the three top telecoms. I forget the names, China Telecom, uh, China Unicom, and China Telewoman. I always forget the third third one. <laughs> but China Mobile. China Mobile. But they, they treasure these relationships. It's with the Chinese government. It has to be. It's a communist government above a free market capitalist uh, system. Uh, you've got the economic system is almost free market. The government is communist, so they have to work with the government. They've built those relationships. Univest, $150 billion is in the same boat. They work with the government, I assume, and all these big companies. So it works out to lawyers, deliberate, make every step properly, it works out to S-L-O-W-L-Y. But it doesn't mean it's over with. You saw a $300 million uh, filing, shell filing with the SEC. Did they do that just to uh, fake everyone out? I don't think so. And you can imagine what $300 million is for. It could be to fund a JV. It could be fund an acquisition. It could be f to, to distribute one of their arms and fund that. It could be anything. It could be do with financing with Munich Re or Pacific Re. Oh, it's glad to see that Univest is a farce. Well, anyway. Listen, that is, listen when people talk like that. They're not I, investors. I, we all want... We all want, he's a trader, that's exactly right. We all want instant gratification. I, I bought this this morning, I sold it this afternoon, all right? And I'll give you an example of that. You know, I looked at that stock, Heliogen, 
Okay. Mm -hmm. And they chilled it back down and I was watching it. So these guys want to fight somehow. I don't know what the hell they're going to do. So I have my daughter buy 3,400 shares at 78 cents. And she sold it the next day, I think at $1.40. So she made herself nice money to pay off her student loans real quick. And guess what? It was a day trade. Boom, boom. Next day she sold it. And it's today it's $1.80. All right. That's not knowing anything. That's picking a stock that, that dipped was getting ripped off, got killed, has great news, blah, 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 the stock keeps going down. Close your eyes, buy it, it went down for, it went for, it went down to 60 cents turn, and the next day she sold it and she made herself. I love down. this idea. I went down with a CEO in New York, New York City almost a year ago, and late at night, he's from Tex, Texas, we went down to Times Square and we walked around in it, and it's amazing the LED advertising. Maybe we could. This Scott Scheller is saying, why don't we buy an electronic billboard in Times Square? I looked at that. There's one, there's a cheap one, but it's up real high, and you only get like thirty seconds. We need to be in like the New York Post, one of those articles in there, because once it's in a newspaper. And we throw everybody under the bus. It, it, you know, it's, it's, it makes a statement. It's, you know, I heard it. there's a lot of noise made from that. So, but again, I thought the truck at the SEC, you know, the photo opportunity of the truck, you know, people seeing the glass building. And, you know, when speaking to law enforcement, and when they said, did anybody call the SEC? I, we said yes. And there's no way to actually find out if the SEC has any of our phone records. I'm sure that just happened to be deleted, right? But the truck in front of the SEC, no one can deny the truck was there at the SEC enforcement conference here, there for for three or three and a half years, four years. You can't mm -hmm. deny it. Right? It's right there. How this can no one ever responded to what we say? But the SEC is paying the criminals money to report crimes that these guys are, you know, probably, listen, I told you yesterday, if you get one settlement, all you have to do is go knock at doors at GE, any company, and say, hey, man, <laughs> give me some information. Here's 100 grand. You come back with information and we'll make more. Then they turn employees against their companies. How are these guys getting the information from inside a public company? Right? Oh, oh they're doing illegal things here. Someone's selling them. It's all fraud. Oh, wait a minute. That's something you say. Um, yeah. uh, this guy's question. I, I Anyway, he's wondering if these, the stuff, I think he's saying, can it squeeze before we are dead or should I leave it in my will? Well, interesting. Sure. Right? Well, That's... it depends. If you're 90 years old, you're going to die. So move along. You know, otherwise you're just being a smart ass. Sell your stock. Well, he's a, he's, he's an investor. I guess it's a sincere question. No, um, listen, we, so do you think we're, we, we have a, we, what do you call it? A Ouija board. We get to actually tell what's going on. It's criminal activity. Go haul a cop. You, you got to If you got, you're upset at what you're seeing. I'll give you the SEC's number. Give them a call and tell them what you see. Say, listen, am I going to die before you do something to stop this fraud? We know who it is. We told you. Go tell them. Have some balls. Call them up. They don't bite you. I'm going to go on Twitter right now and put the number up again for you. And let's see if you make the call and get back to us and tell us what they say. Tell us what they say. They won't bite you. We, we have, uh, I'd say, six, maybe seven people that would put up money to help buy a full-page ad um, somewhere. Wall Street Journal, uh, um, the, uh, you know, the local pickup newspaper, <laughs> meet and greet. Um, somebody else is asking about tomorrow's news. Look, there's there isn't any. We don't know anything. It could happen. Uh, all right, I just put a photo with the gentleman. It says whistleblower awards over one billion dollars, and the numbers right there. 
It's at the top of it. I just posted it. I call the SEC, have some balls. They don't bite. That's for you. I put it up on Twitter for you. If you like, you can piss on us. If you want to piss on the shorts, piss on the shorts. But don't call us up and ask us stupid questions. I mean, it's re- insane. Hey, I bought the video. When's it going to 700? Someone said it was going to 700. It's 600. Wait, it's 500. When's it going to 700? No one knows. Any of the best plays on the street, no one knows what the hell is going on. The only people that know what's going on is the crooks. They short. They pay people to write a negative story. They attack it more, destroy the company, and that's all they do. And everybody looks the other way. Ace in the hole is listening. Oh, God. (laughs) He says that news about one of the bits of news. I'm not not going to repeat it. isn't true. People in the chat know what it is. I don't want to add more credence to what's not true. Um, you big Al, you got your MMTLP transfer. I think that's brilliant. Um, this gentleman's uh, GTII shares are still missing. Charles Schwab. Let me ask everybody about that. Stop for a second. All right, so we're looking at this stock. The company gave a special dividend, a free share of stock. What was it? One for 10? I forgot. The one number, for whatever. 10, common stock restricted. So if you have a thousand shares, you get a hundred shares, correct? Right. The brokerage firm gets a, gets the shares from the, uh, the broke gets the shares from the, the transfer agent. They send them over and they distribute them. E-Trade has 10 million shares. Right. The transfer agent sends over one million because that's all he recognizes that they own. They don't have a complete list. They just get what the brokerage firms have, right? Right. The brokerage firms show that E Trade owns one million. E Trade quietly, no one knows, owns ten million. They won't tell us. And here it is. I just put it up on Twitter. The little chart. And explains the whole thing and how it works. The DTC has a number. The transfer agent sends the shares to the DTC. Merrill Lynch calls up the DTC and says, hey, we're supposed to have a million dividend shares. And the DTC says, we we only got 100,000 for you. So now E-Trade is missing 900,000. What do they do? They walk around saying, how the hell do we fix this? And they say, I know. When everybody calls us up, just lie to them. Tell them we didn't get it. Blame the company. They're not free trading. You can't do this. Or you can pay us $100, $200, and we'll get you a certificate, and we'll mail it to you. They're doing everything in their power to change the subject over something that's super easy. Um. There we go. Ask yourself that why the biggest brokerage firms that have billions that worth a hundred billion dollars, Goldman Sachs worth three hundred billion, Morgan Stanley, who knows how much they're worth, two hundred billion dollars, J.P. Morgan, they can't figure out how to do a dividend. You tell me. Um. I have been buying GTI for over a year. Board has gone quiet. Dividends not showing. No acquisition. And it's shifted to finger motion. I hope that squeezes instead. Now it's all about enforcement. Well, look, the market for over the last six, except for the last month, and there's always a correction. Stocks don't go straight up. But the market started telling us, if you watch it, that finger, somebody was accumulating finger, not you or me. Somebody was accumulating finger in size. They took it from about $1.40 over seven, if not eight. So the market was telling you to look at finger. It's not our call. It's not Ham's call. It's not my call. It's not about our chat board. It's not about our uh, talks saying, oh, focus only on GTII. That's not no investing. That's not trading. No one told anyone to focus on anything. 
William, you said it correct. The market is telling us. The tape is telling us. The company came out, and for the gentleman he just said about GTI, when the stock was a dollar seventy, uh, benchmark came out and said the company was worth five dollars. So we were nice enough to tell everybody, hey, the stock is two. They just said it's worth five. What's the difference? Why wouldn't you take a shot on it? It's three dollars below what a financial analyst just said where the stock belongs. Based on it was very conservative. It's the report is right there. A matter of fact, it's the only report. The stock started going up. The shorts were trying to hold it down. All of a sudden, the thing started to get a little out of control. And what happens next? The shorts come out with the short and distort story from Capybara. Knock the stock down from seven and a quarter down to 458, which is about $140 million loss in two hours. What did this company do? They sued Capybara using Mark Bazil. Mark Bazil then went after their hosting service that hosts host their platform. And he said that the uh, the gentlemen, the people that are doing this, these the short the short stories on Capybara are from Brazil. That's the financial research capital of the New York Stock Exchange is, is Brazil. Somewhere in the bushes, someone is doing writing reports for more sure. Not not on Broadway, all right, or, or on Wall Street or you know Water Street. They're doing it from Brazil, and they're doing a report on. According Bazille. to Brazil, they're doing it from Brazil. Right, and here it is. They do a story on a company that owns business in China. The people in Brazil don't even know where China is. They don't even know where Wall Street is. They're doing they're a really deal. Do they're getting rid of the U.S. dollar between. Right. The Twix them. Well, this is this is the uncovering of a financial crime family. All right, someone is paying someone else to do stuff from a faraway land, and we all know they're not going to show up in the court in New York City, Capybara, on November twenty seventh. And all their information is false. And while we're attacking that, who comes out with another report? Ben Zinger. Comes out with a report, no analyst. He said that the analyst said the number was 14 million for the quarter and they reported 9 million. It was off by 40%, I think the number was. I don't know. And because it was posted on Benzinga, Benzinga has a, uh, a distribution of their research through all the platforms. That's like automatic. And then the algorithms pick it up and they start selling. The computer starts selling. Whether it's whatever it was, if it's something to run interference, interference to get people to sell the stock. So that was another fake report. Now the company should sue Benzinga. I've been yelling about that for two weeks. How does Jason will lose his whole business? How do investors contact the SEC to report missing GTII dividend shares? Call the whistleblower line. There it is. Is there an email out. address? No, you got to call up a number. Okay. Um, Tell them you're a short seller and you uh, you want to report a crime like, ben, like uh, Hindenburg. <laughs> I shorted a stock. I owe a dividend. I don't want to give it to anybody and screw them. What do I do now? Can I get paid now? That's all you got to say. I committed fraud. <laughs> no one seems to care. When do I, can I get a whistle? Can I get some money from the whistleblower now? That's what you got to say. So do you, are you going to order Kung Pao chicken, beef, broccoli, and shrimp fried lice? I'm dying for an egg roll and soup. That's my, I'm dying. Um, and it's all happened because the ace, because working on a trading desk at my firm, we used to send guys like Ace down to Chinatown. Ace in the hole is. We used to send a guy like him to Chinatown to knock on a door to go get Chinese food from a restaurant that no one really knows about, but Wall Street people did, you know, select few people. And when the young guys would go down there, they could always call back on the 800 number, say, I'm not knocking on that door like they thought they were going to get murdered because that's what it looked like. And a gentleman told me he worked for EF Hutton and he was on their block trading desk one day and they sent them to Jersey City to get the White House, uh, to, uh, White Castle burgers. And he called me last night and told me, he goes, it's so funny you said that 
because that's what they did to him at a different firm. Everyone did that to the young guys. That was our, that was everyone's attempt at hazing. And that's why um, I made fun of uh, uh, one guy's asking, who's ever going to stop the criminal activity and when? And that's the whole point, uh, Jay. We're in a fight. And I think Ham and I, I I'm not going to speak for him, but I view the way to get these criminals stopped is for a prime broker to lose money. Then it'll stop when they see the risk. Everybody else says, go to Congress, go the legal route, do all that. That's all great. We have to do it. Educate. Number one way, cost them money. They'll stop doing it. But we're not there yet. I look at it, I look at it a different way. I know. <laughs> and I just spoke to the FBI and I spoke with the Secret Service. Right. I was 100% as honest as I can be. I said, if I says, if you guys don't want to do it, I, each individual, I said it to them at different times. If you don't give a shit, just let me know because you know what? Otherwise, I don't give a fuck either. I'm I'm walking away from it. You can all get robbed. They're gonna rob your kids, your grandkids. It's never gonna stop, and the country's gonna collapse. So if you don't want to do it, I don't give a shit anymore. Knock yourself out. I could kill us. If you want to do it. Get back to me. I'll teach you. I sent you all the documentation to start the game. I can ramp it up as fast as you want. So I have enough information with them to go to their superiors to start an investigation. And when they call me back and they ask the other questions, then I will, like I said, I'll drill it down to where we can expose Lynn and every gory detail about what's going on in there and GTII. And just at that point, it ramps up. But I told him point blank, if you don't want to do this, don't waste my fucking time. I don't need to tell people your name. I really don't give a shit. And that's exactly, and the guy left. He goes, you know, I goes, I appreciate it. I said, no, just, you know, if you don't want to do it, don't do it. No one, no one else seems to care. Do I give a shit? And that's um, what I said. I didn't ask them for help. Hurry, because our guys are losing. I didn't say anything like that. If you don't want to do it, fucking have the balls to say it. I don't let everybody know. Hey, the FBI bowed out. They don't give a shit. Secret Service bows out. They don't give a shit. If you invest in anything in the equity market, you're out of your fucking mind. I would tell you that immediately. Go buy puts and everything and go spread negative stories. That's it. That's what I would say. And I would say it on record, phone, whatever. Go pick your any stock you like and do whatever the fuck you want. That's what I would say. It's the Wild West. Knock yourself out. This guy but makes... I don't believe that. Sorry. I said, I don't believe that those agencies, the people I spoken to, you know, I got the recommendation from a federal judge to the FBI, for the agent that called me highly, highly recommended. Okay. So these are serious people that want to see things happen. So again, and that came from shareholders. Okay. Shareholders reached out to their connections. Everyone seemed to have a connection and you know what? I followed up on it immediately. Um, this guy points out, and I think he's right. He's a he's a longtime follower. You know, when they when a company does a reverse split, the broker dealer has no problem taking you know do handling that right away, doing the shares right away. But then they have problems. Like these guys, listen, the back offices never have a problem with any of this. The only time they have a problem is when they don't have it. Right. There's your answer. It's pretty yeah, easy. And that's, so, you, that. so now you're telling us, okay, we're not getting us. What should the company do? What is this company supposed to do? You got 100, 200 people calling you up saying, I didn't get it, I didn't get it, whatever the numbers are. What are they supposed to do? Go retain a law firm? Small companies got to go out and get a law firm, give them millions of dollars to go take on E Trade, Ameritrade, or wherever it is. And you think it's going to happen in two days. That's that's what public that's what a small public co public company has to do to take on Wall Street because they didn't give you a dividend because they forgot how to do it. In, in the long run, they're dead. They'll pay. They'll close it out. But again, that doesn't help anybody here because you need instant gratification on the stock price. No one gives a shit if you got an extra hundred or five hundred or thousand shares. No one cares. We want the stocks to go up. And the only way the stocks to go up is to get the law enforcement in here, squeeze these guys, and send them to jail. That's what has to happen. 
and we're guy, close to, and we're close to that happening. This guy says the only way out is up. That's on my tombstone. I got that. <laughs> That's going to be on your tombstone. Right. I, right. Hope so. I hope it's not pointing down. <laughs> and your wife's going to have a finger pointing over. I'm with loser. Um, um, uh, I'm going to have to put a, when I'm dead, they're going to have to put a piece of plastic over me, uh, plexiglass, because all the people that are going to come to my, uh, my funeral, if the stock doesn't work, they're all going to be spitting on me. <laughs> so I think you cover me up, I said. Just tell them that you can piss here. I'm already gone. Um, <laughs> so this gentleman, good suit on. this gentleman's new. So you, you know, some we've talked about this, but he's suggesting asking really why wouldn't a share recall slash share count work? And he's he's admitting he's new to this, so it's not a he's a not trying to be recall, provocative. A share recall. I don't know how you do a share recall. I have no idea if, if you read. You got to remember the rules are set up by the brokerage firms of the SEC. You used so, to be able to hit star 69 and you could, uh, or, anyway, that was a long time ago. I just don't phones. know how a share recall, turning your shares and get it, you turn in your A shares and get a B share, maybe something like that. Maybe that's a trick we could do. So if the shorts are listening, that may be a good idea. Everyone went to turn class A shares into a class B. How about this idea? You do a dividend of 10% of your A share. So if you have a thousand shares, 10%, you could turn that will go 10% 10 would become a B share. And then it can be converted back into an A share. So basically, it's just a different twist on it. I have to think about it. One that. of the problems is that. People are in for the short squeeze to do any of that stuff. You're not going to be able to sell when the squeeze happens, but it would be the way to cost the shorts, uh, the prime brokers, a lot of money. Um, here's a question. If illegal shorting has been a problem for decades, regardless of who was in the White House, how is this a Gary Gensler issue? It has to be bigger than him. Two answers for me. One, he's in charge now. Two, you're absolutely right. It is bigger than the whoever's in charge of the SEC. But Ham, you so it's, a, so it's a political hand grenade. No one wants to go to Congress, as you can see, getting questioned under oath and saying, "Hey, what's going on?" Yeah, you can see the you can see that he's tap dancing around all the questions, right? Yeah. He does it in a video for, oh, I recall, I don't remember, I have to see, I don't know. Hey, we need the audited finance, audited paper trail on the uh, the shareholder account. Oh, we got to see, we don't, we make the rules for this. So they're doing everything not to give you an answer. That's what we're fighting. That's the highest level right there, covering up for criminals. The system has been looted. I've been saying the same thing. We're trying, this is a battle about change, right? If this was a $50, $20, $30 stock, I would tell you it's super dangerous, all right? I got it. The stock's going to squeeze. People own at different prices. Again, I, 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 this, is why, this is why the SEC is a disgrace because when these stocks do get squeezed, we know they get overvalued. We know that. And people buying at different times, but this is a product of the SEC because when the stock squeezed from sixty cents to nine dollars in GTI, I'm sure someone paid eight or nine. You know, I'm sure someone paid near the top and saying, "What the hell happened here?" And the stock gets crushed back down. A short squeeze makes people buy at the wrong time that don't follow or don't understand what's going on. I've always say, accumulate, never chase. I always say buy the dips, sell the rips. Those are ways to avoid. I never chase anything. I may miss a lot of great trades, but I do not, and I stick to my guns. I don't chase it. And that's the best part of what's going on in finger motion. Lynn partners and their short friends, whoever's doing it for them, don't give you the chance to chase it. They always try to hold it down. That tells you how stupid and how trapped they are 
because they're holding it down because they can't let it go up. All right. Volatility is how you scare people out of the stock. Sideways action, which we are watching every day now, sideways, up and down, up and down, up a little bit here or there, there. That brings in buyers. The volatilities out of the name. They, uh, they tried to create volatility with the fake reports, what, three times already we've seen it? Michael Dion from Australia writing a report. Oh, the guy from Australia. Who's Lynn Partner's biggest partner, biggest investor? Oh, he's the guy from Australia. That's interesting. Then we get a negative report from where? Brazil. And then we get a report on Benzinga with no name attached to it. You tell me, does that sound all on the up and up? Everyone else gets reports, whether it's from a brokerage firm, a normal place, or whatever. We got three. We got three reports. From, we got one from Australia, one from Brazil, and one with no name attached to it. That's the research that Finger Motion got. And one report from Brazil. I know it gets funnier every time I say it. Oh, Brazil! Okay, I'm just dying <laughs> laughing. It goes right over my head. I don't. I don't. Even it's the it, David but. Letterman approach to jokes. Just keep right. saying the them over and over again. And the only legitimate report came from Benchmark, which I'm sure has a financial analyst who wrote the report, saying the company has a five dollar target, valuation of five bucks, and then the revenue came out afterwards where it doubled, and in their report said that they would reevaluate and come out with, you know, with a possible upgrade. We had someone that does financial reports said this company, in his eyes, is worth between eight and ten on that new revenue. Okay, and that's being conservative. And here we are watching people trying to mark it down below the five dollar number and three dollars below the number that the guy thinks it should be trading out based on fundamentals. And this is all normal. And they don't even sell it down. They're selling 100 shares, 90 shares, five shares, back and forth all day. And that's just a sign of security fraud. So we've been on the phone for over an hour, and the stock has barely traded 11,000 shares. And most of it's been in the same spot at 490 back and forth. So they're just washing some trades here. I'm sure there's been some small buyers, but I'm sure most of the rest of the volume has been fake. Well, that reminds me. Let me see if I can get hold on one second. I just asked someone to get me the new updated uh, real short position. It was down to 2.2 or 2.3 if I got the number. Let's see what it's down to now. Right? We saw, you remember the real short, short of 3.3 million when the stock got to six or seven bucks, they laid into it. And then they came out with the latest attack trying to knock it down again. And the volume drop the the short the real short volume dropped from 3.3 million to 2.3 million i'm just averaging i think it was 2.2 a million what was it a million something shares a million three something like that a million five they covered and the stock went down how is that possible when someone's actually covering or covering buying back stock and the stock go lower well, we reported it for you. They're watching it, and they're taking trades. The naked short seller is naked shorting more offshore, selling more, and the buyer is the real short. So the naked short sells it to the real short. The real short says, hey, I just bought it back. I'm returning the shares I borrowed. I don't want to pay that fee anymore. That's what's been going on quietly, but we've been spotting it and reporting it for days. So when I get the new number, which I just asked for, someone can actually see the real short, real short. Remember that, not the naked, that's the crooked short. The real short number is coming down. And then you can see the interest rate that they're paying is coming down and the shares to borrow is going up again. That means they're returning the shares and there's no interest in shorting more shares here, their interest is returning in buying back the stock. And they move the liability to the naked short. 
Um, Is that clear, William? Well, we've talked about it a lot, but I think you no, could you sure could go they, over they, it again. They, how they, they, if they, you're uh, if you are the criminals, you get a buddy to do the real shorting to help put pressure on the stock. And then as criminals, you've got multiple LLCs. You come in through your your one of your criminal LLCs and you buy the short position at a profit for the real short, thus giving him a profit for doing the work for you. Then you now have naked uh, 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 counterfeit shares in an LLC you're going to walk away from if you have to. And you're just stuffing a prime broker. But over time, they've always won. They're not going to win here in finger, I don't think, or or afterwards. Well, the, the reason I don't believe they can win in finger is because they have the stock. You know, I'm just hitting up the video calls for a second, and I, they expired this week also. And I'm looking at the NVIDIA. I can't do that. I'm, where's the stock at? Is it 300? I think these numbers are wrong. I'm just look. I'm sorry. I'm just looking at the video calls, and for some reason the strikes don't equal the prices, but they don't. But just, I'm just giving an example. The 240 calls have traded. You know, it, that can't be the 240. It's got to be no higher. Oh, I'm hitting Tesla. I'm sorry. The Tesla 240 calls for tomorrow. The stock's down six and three quarters. They're down four dollars today, and they're a dollar fifty right now. Dollar dollar fifty two. You know, we talk about big volume. You're seeing options in uh, in in fingers six thousand, two thousand. These options traded 145,000 today. The 237s traded 78,000. The 242s. 45,000, the 245, 72,000. That, my friends, is option trading. That's volume, all right? That's in Tesla. I went to hit the video up and I was looking at Tesla, and the one of the numbers that makes sense. And the video, the same thing. Here is the NVIDIA 490s, 47,000 calls traded at five bucks. The 492s, 15,000. At four, these are five dollar options. The 500 calls are $1.60, 48,000 traded. These are, those are big numbers. That's real options. So when we see options in finger at 6,000 or 10,000, that, that's like a not event compared to with the big boys trade here. All right. So again, and our options are trading at 50 cents. I'm talking about options trading at $5, 100,000 of them, 50,000 of them. With five bucks, that's big money. Anyway, I just got off the beaten path about uh, sizable option trades. Finger motion is still a baby in that in that arena. Don't get me wrong, there's options trading, but nothing like what you're seeing, you know, in these other names. The open interest is six thousand of the fives, six thousand of the six five and a halfs. That's like, you know, these other ones trading they're trading one hundred fifty thousand a day. And they roll over the place. I forgot, William. What else did we talk well, about? Well, this gentleman asks Aren't the shorters responsible for the dividend? Why don't brokers just take the money from the shorts? Okay, this is how it goes again. The, the company announces a dividend, they get a record date approved by the SEC and FINRA with all their filings. The record date is like 20 days or 15 days later. Later, Every brokerage firm through the UPC, Uniform Practice Code, alerts their back offices of a, a material event. So they can't say the dog ate their homework. They know it's coming. The dividend is dispersed. The record date comes. The record date is a snapshot. So take your camera out. Take a picture of your face. That's a snapshot as of today. It's a snapshot of the holders of that company. It does not change. All right. If you're the holder of a record date, you're entitled to the dividend. 
Wall Street doesn't give two flying shits about who gets what. They don't care. They don't care who does what. If they did care, they would say, hey, this company's issuing a dividend. We have to make sure that we have shares to match everyone who owns the stock at our firm. So E-Trade calls the DTC up and says, how many shares do you have for us? The DTC says, E-Trade, we have 100,000. E-Trade goes, oh, my God, internally we own 10 million. We're short nine point whatever number million shares. What do we do? They go, eh, don't worry about it. Who cares? No one cares. And E-Trade, because of that approach I just described to you, lets it go on. And now they're on the hook for the dividend. So now the small company who just wanted to give the shareholders a dividend, everyone wants them to file a lawsuit to go attack E-Trade and Ameritrade who have the biggest lawyers in the country working for them. And you have a small company using an attorney out of Texas trying to bang down their doors. You see the problem yet, anybody? What you're going against? That's what we're going. Um, one guy's asking, what price are you guys further loading the boat with finger? My average is 550, and I'm looking to average down. Well, you know, I know something. I have a problem with that because I have a, an Italian disease, I'm riddled with it, and I just can't, when I get rid of it, I'll be glad to average down. You buy Fiat cars? I have uh, funds are low. It's a very, very- Funds damaging. are low, very, very yeah, funny. Funds are low, that's the Richard, it's not legal advice. When your funds are low, you, no matter what, you can't average down. So I'm sort of like stuck. I have very little to keep moving around. I again, I'll I'll get William to make fun of me, but I'm not Rockefeller. So if anyone doesn't know who Rockefeller is, <laughs> uh, again, I'm dating myself. But I, I just don't. We just can't. You know, I just don't have the money. You have to do it. You know, we're frozen in time. That's it. So we we made our bets. The dice have been tossed out there, and whatever happens is going to happen. I can't. You know, I can't make any moves to increase my position that'll be worthwhile that doesn't stop you from doing it but again that's your decision you can see if the short position is 200 million and the volume is 134,000 now it was 117 when we started and you can see them picking up the little wish washing back and forth here but if there's 200 million to buy even if we're criminally insane and we say 200 million and it's just 10 million shares. They get 200 million. I say it's 200 million, but you know what? Maybe I'm wrong, but I'm off by 190 million. I'm out of my mind. 10 million shares. A, if you were short 10 million shares of the stock and you were facing going to jail, you bet your ass you would turn around and cover it because it's still manageable. You'll take a beating, but you can cover it, right? You'll take a beating, but you'll cover it. When it's 200 million shares, there's no way to cover. You're trapped, you're exposed. Your fraud game didn't work this time around. It works nine out of 10 times, this time you got busted. So now they have a big problem. So the number's not 10 million, the number's 200 million, just based on that, because they would have covered already. Anybody would try to get their ass out of, away from this thing if you're short. There's no selling, everyone's educated, and everyone's sitting here waiting. And all you get back, all you see it's going on is 400 shares this way, 200 this way, back and forth. That's what you're seeing. And you determine what price you want to jump in or get out. That's your business. All right, but to ask us to do it, you know, when you, when we're not financially the Rockefellers, that doesn't mean I'm not going to tell my friends to get in there and buy more guys who have a lot of money. I always tell them to start averaging and keep going. And I tell you exactly what I tell them. Don't chase, accumulate. If you're buying stock, if you're buying 10,000 shares, buy a thousand, wait, buy a thousand, wait, buy a thousand, wait. And that's how players, that's how I tell my friends to do it. I told my friend he wanted to buy stock today, so don't pay more than five. And they sold it to him, but I think he paid up to 4.95, he said. 
And that's the gentleman who told me about the shorts trying to reach around the street, trying to get people to write another negative report. So they're looking for reporters to help them out here. But anyone who has any brains can see that any short that's writing a story here is going to face litigation. But what are they going to promote? What are they going to attack? The company? What are they going to attack? So it is what it is. Can the broker dealers slash prime brokers slash market makers tell the difference between counterfeit electronic shares and real no. electronic shares? No, no one, no. Go watch the Morgan Stanley guy. I naked shorted every day. That's all he said. All right, it's 1.5 million shares now, so it's up a little bit. 1.57 million is the new naked, is the real short number now. Yeah, I, I, that's the daily short number now, straight from the. Put that up for you. There's no going up there. Just give me a second. I'm just putting it up. I wrote one sentence and I had six errors in it. <laughs> but the real short number is 1.5 million and that'll work. Here it goes. All right, this way I make a note of it, a notation of that. We have to we have to track these guys down like dogs. I apologize. It is what it is. I, again, I sound like a broken record. I feel bad for it, but there's nothing I can say. Listen, no one wants it over more than we do, so we can move on. But again, and so, and again, I'll just, this is my last quote on this today, William, because it's beautiful outside and you should all go outside for a walk, take a walk today. Yeah. But, uh, it, like I told, I told the Secret Service and the FBI, point blank, if you don't do anything, the system is going to collapse. You know, I says, I'm older than you guys. I can hear it in your voice. Don't do anything. You're only, you're only hurting your own family, your friends, your cousins, your uncles, whoever it may be. That's up to you. Your, your enforcement, we're reporting a crime. You don't want to do anything. It's on you. I let everybody know. You said I could tell people I was talking to you, but I did. And if you don't want to do it, and you tell me you don't want to do it, I'm going to let everybody know that both agencies turned their back on us. What else can I say? And if they don't care, the enforcement agencies in the United States don't care. We tried everything. So again, I went to the highest level. If someone has a better idea, you know, who, who should we get? You know, you tell me. Pat Byrne said he would fix it when Donald Trump uh, gets it gets uh, elected. I really believe that's true, and that uh, Patrick Byrne is a man of his own, a man of, of his word. He's doing everything he can to get Donald Trump back in here, and he's not even a Republican. So, Patrick Byrne said on the conference call, and that's a guy that no one wants to see helping out because he said he would end this thing in, in 20 minutes. I think he said. So there you go. So Patrick Byrne will do, if we can't do it now, he will take care of it. I don't know when that election is. What is it, next year, uh, William? When is it, uh, November next year? Yeah, I assume we'll still have an election November 4th or whatever the Tuesday date is. Yeah, so I'm just saying, so there you go. Patrick Byrne is doing all he can to actually work on the election stuff right now. So he's added to the naked short selling fight game because he he secured everything he had to do in overstock. He took his money, he bought Bitcoin at whatever, 18,000 and Bitcoin went to 37,000. So Patrick Burns doing quite well what he does. And he told everybody he was doing. It'll be November 5th. All right, but again, you're watching the crime of a century. Please, I beg you, call the SEC. 
Call the DOJ. Call whoever you think you should call. Register a complaint. Tell them to look into the stock. Where, who's selling all the shares? That's all you have to say. They won't bite you. I'm a holder. Who's selling all the shares? There's counterfeit shares in the system. I tell people to do it every day. My friends call all the time. Right? Because they know they have their money on the line and doing everything they can. Instead of counting on me and William to do it, everyone should do their part. That's it. It's only helping you, your family, everyone, your kids, your grandkids. It has to end. If it doesn't end, the system is going to collapse. There's nothing, they're stealing $9 billion a day. $9 billion a day. That's what you're fighting right now. We're not fighting a peanut. We're fighting whales here. And no one's going to protect the criminals in finger motion. It's a stupid trade. They increased it and trapped themselves. Now they have no way out of it. And all we need is a crumb. A crumb from law enforcement. A crumb. Someone knocks on their door and it's all over with. They'll all be screaming, just like the woman, William, that's attacking you for putting her face up that she said that was copyright. Yeah, it look, it's it's a marketing photograph and it didn't say copyright when I anyway, whatever. I'm not going to the same show. That just shows you that they don't like being called criminals. They want to take all the money. They enjoy when they get paid making two, three hundred thousand a year to sign papers and look the other way. Right. But when they get labeled as a criminal, oh, oh what is that? What are you crazy? You can't do that to me. Do brokers just re-lend fake shares, just sell fake shares continuously? Do the brokers, do the criminals sell fake shares and then the brokers use those fake shares to settle other trades? So you buy, so you, you go out there today and you buy 10,000 shares. Your account shows you got 10,000 shares. You can call up your broker and say, hey, I bought 10,000 shares today, five bucks in finger motion. What's the rate? And they'll say to you, yeah, I'll, I'll we'll borrow your shares because it looks to them like you you are warm. So you're lending out shares that you purchased that were fake. They think it's long. And then they lend your shares out to somebody to short. And that's how it gets bigger and bigger because there's more shares running around. They create them. The whole market cap of the company is upside down. Everything about the stock market is corrupt. Everything. But it's all in the, they all want it. So it, what does it do? It gives the, you get more liquidity. There's more trading. These are, this is how they make money. More liquidity, more trading. If the stocks don't trade, they don't make any money. If they thought they could win, they let the stock, they go, let higher. The stock go higher. But they can't. Here they are trying to, on uh, no volume, they're doing the shuffle 200 to market down. Then they drop. Then they drop. There's no sellers. They've moved 200 shares down. Again, all they're trying to do is test the market to see what's available. There was 200 shares for sale at 488. Somewhere between 485 to 100 shares. And the 88 offering dropped 100 shares. It's now, I don't know about you. If I was selling 200 stupid shares at 488, I hit the 485 bid and leave town and say, screw you. I'm not sitting around for three pennies watching this all day. It's all fraud. And that tells you that as a market maker, just trying to manipulate the stock to get you to think there's a seller. That's all they're doing. Yeah. It's a head game. It's a head game. And I hear by your voices that the head game is getting to you. And that's what they want to do. And unfortunately, that's the game. I can do it. Give me, get me to the short side, get me the money, get me set up. I will torture investors. I would steal everything I can from them. If the SEC is listening, give me an account. I'll show you how to do it. Every day I'll be destroying companies, big, small, everywhere. Now I can report it to the SEC and they'll pay me too. I get paid twice. And if you think this is, uh, if you think this is crazy, this is what the this is what the equity market is about now. There you go. There's nothing else to say. It's right there. Everything they're doing is just to defraud you and take your money. That's it.
All right, no more questions. I'm going to go outside and go for a walk. All right. Thank you, Ham. All right, have a great day. Call ended. All right. Um, I didn't see this question. I didn't ask it. Um, I can't prove you wrong. Uh, they GTII tried a, a voluntary shareholder count through the transfer agent affidavit with copies of the statement. Uh, my understanding, Ameritrade was found out to have 60 million shares short. That was a rumor, not confirmed. And only about 33% of shareholders participated. Otherwise, if they do a recall, if they were to make take the company private or they were to bring all the shares in, you couldn't participate in the squeeze, which I at this point I'm fine with. Just burn the shorts. But if you get everyone to send their stock in or force them to stock, send it in, there's, you can't sell while they're there. So what would it take to have a recall no I, I don't see that as i don't see that as uh, happening I don't see that as happening i don't see it as being successful all right i'm going to end on a comment on uh, caud <clears throat> of course the criminals are counterfeiting shares in a massive quantity versus the toxic note they signed. It's my opinion. I can't prove it. Once you have a note, lawyers sign it. They go to the prime broker with a new uh, LLC, check a box, and then they start flooding the market. Why? Because the prime broker believes they're only going to sell 1.6 million shares off that note, but then they triplicate, quadruplicate, quintuplicate, uh, pentagoninate, uh, decimate. Anyway, they put it out to every prime broker they have a relationship with. And, you know, we've seen it in front of our eyes. 25 million shares sold that don't exist. Oh, no, there's systems in place. It's written. Well, whatever, whatever. Um, so good news today, but of course they sell it off. They want you to think it doesn't mean anything. Collective, November 16th, collective audience appoints digital media and technology industry executive Elizabeth DeMars to the board of directors. So you've got a digital media and technology expert industry executive who's willing to come on to the board of collective audience, despite the criminals taking it from 38, from 25, all the way down to two on completely fraudulent counterfeit securities fraud trading. So, November 16th, collective audience, a leading provider of digital consumer acquisition solutions, has appointed Elizabeth DeMars as independent member of its board of directors. Directors. She was also appointed as the chair of the compensation committee. There's not going to be any pay gap there. I'm just joking. Quote, we welcome Elizabeth's extensive executive and board experience at both private and public companies, stated Brent Sun, current CEO of uh, CAUD. Her more than a decade of experience as chief marketing officer at Bloomberg, as well as having served as president and CEO of thestreet.com. That's the company Jim Cramer had. And he, anyway, we'll leave it there. Makes Elizabeth, and, but 
It makes the thing is Jim Cramer is friendly with the criminal hedge funds. The risk here is if Elizabeth also believes these hedge funds are good guys, and they're all guys, the criminal ones, that's a little bit dicey for the future of CAUD. You need to view those smiling faces as fronts for criminals who just want to steal the market cap. Jim Cramer admits to James Al Chachir that when he was on the trading desk at Goldman Sachs, he put out false information. He put out false reports. He manipulated stock price to try to get returns for his fund. She was on the street with him. Anyway, I hope, I hope um, that her experience, her, her uh, intelligence, her hard work, she sees what's going on. I mean, <clears throat> that what's happened with CAUD, it wouldn't take someone of her uh, capabilities to recognize what happened. So I think we'll be okay. <clears throat> anyway, the street was Jim Cramer's uh, thing. Uh, Elizabeth DeMars has helped transform and cause several companies to grow, including AppNexus, which was acquired by AT&T for $1.7 billion. That's huge. That's great experience that she has. It's awesome. She joins us at an opportune time as we pursue a number of prospective acquisitions, and we look forward to her guidance and insights as we take collective audience to the next level. Um, Elizabeth DeMars commented, quote, the digital advertising industry is primed for great change and I see collective audience as well positioned to disrupt the market with its digital advertising platform. That's the data logic platform which uniquely eliminates inefficiencies from the digital ad buyer and seller process. Now a NASDAQ company, she continues, it, uh, a collective audience can leverage this stronger position to pursue strategic accretive acquisitions um, which will complement its leading edge technology, data logic, which is now collective audience. It's the data logic technology and to accelerate growth. <coughs> Unquote. For more than 35 years, she's she has experience. Um, uh, Elizabeth DeMars has served on the board and in executive positions on several digital media and technology companies. She previously served as president, CEO, and chairman of the board of the street. You know, by the way, I'm, I'm just occurred to me, maybe she came in after they got rid of uh, Jim Cramer. I don't know. We'd have to check in on all that. Um, I'm sure when she was there as CEO, chairman of the board, she cleaned out all the potential. And there's no evidence that he did anything at the street incorrectly. Anyway, at the street, she not notably diversified the company from a B2C ad supported retail stock picking business into a global B2B merger and acquisition data and news organization. That's huge. That's huge. That's the kind of skills and, and experience that's perfect. She's perfect. Founded by Mount Martin Peretz and Jim Kramer in 1996, the street distinguished itself from other financial media companies with its journalistic excellence, unbiased approach, bye, 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 bye and interactive multimedia coverage on the financial markets, economy, industry, trends, investment, and financial planning. 
So that's a great experience on her part. Earlier, uh, um, Ms. DeMars was CEO and president of creditcards.com, a company she created by consolidating numerous assets around the world and eventually selling the company to bank rate in 2010 for 145 million. She has the skill, she's done it before. She's, in my words, rolled up companies and then, and then sold it for a big uh, a profit as an exit strategy. Excellent, excellent experience. Um, Ms. DeMars also transformed iLife.com into bank rate engineering the turnaround of the company, she drove exponential growth and created 450 million, 450 million in shareholder value. Um, she spent a decade as the chief marketing officer for Bloomberg. Wow, that's huge. Working directly for the founder, Michael Bloomberg, and was instrumental in the formation of several media profit properties. Anyway, I'll stop there. I think it's exciting, and I congratulate Elizabeth DeMars, and I look forward. I think she's perfect for the board. I congratulate Brent's son for... Um, uh, uh, lo locating uh, Ms. DeMars, and I really congratulate collective audience on this appointment. This is all good news, but of course the criminals just keep selling. I hope she recognizes that that's what goes on when when you when you when a CEO signs a toxic convertible note, even if it's above market, if it has warrants and it has backward-looking VWAP and a big slug of stock, which, whilst restricted for six months, is going to be able, because it's set aside at the transfer agent, the criminals are able to go to their prime brokers, set up a new, uh, several new uh, LLCs, and start flooding the market with... Failure to locate, which is illegal. Never intended to selling, which is illegal. Uh, a coordination with their buddies to manipulate the stock price, which is illegal. And they just sell, sell, sell. And you can see it if um, uh, Ms. DeMars gets a chance to look at the numbers, and I'm sure she will now that she's on the board. Um, Aubrey SPAC had 41,555 shares out. I heard it's 60,000. Just call it 60,000 shares. Somehow, the criminals sold almost 3 million shares of ASPA down from 38 in the $25 uh, dollar range. You couldn't do it. So there's no level playing field putting a lie to Gary Gensler's uh, mission statement and Gerbar Wall's quotes. Um, but you couldn't do it. And then NASDAQ halted trading, which I think was irresponsible. But all right, they halt trading. Then, that, I think that was Wednesday, on Friday, CAUD somehow starts trading even though the company had not distributed any shares. I think the volume on Friday, uh, you, you can look it up, was almost 8 million. Monday, this Monday, it was 8 million. Uh, Tuesday, it was 5 million. Today, it's relatively low. Yesterday, I can't remember. But it, it all adds up to 20, 25 million of shares which don't exist. Collective audience paid 11 million shares. They did a toxic note with these criminal clients of this hedge fund, 
for for 1.6, call it 13 million shares. And maybe the insiders got some shares, but they can't trade those. Most of the um, 11 million shares, 11.6 million shares are restricted for 11 months. Only three point some million were distributed by now. They have been most of actually 1.6 million still haven't been distributed. Of the 3.6, 1.6 haven't been distributed. The hedge funds, apparently the the financiers, the criminals got 1.6 million shares. Everything on this video is in my opinion. And then that leaves maybe 2 million to trade. But most of those shares are held by people close to the company that have no intention of selling or lending out the stock. I hope Ms. DeMars has some curiosity and says, wait a minute, what's the pattern here? The criminals sold stock that doesn't exist, manipulating the price downward based on what? based on the advisor, financial advisors to ASPA who had friends, had two hedge funds they'd known for years who did a toxic note. That toxic note, whatever it's called, whatever it looks like, big smiling faces, it gave permission to criminals, liars, counterfeiters, destroyers of entire market caps to sell 25 million shares that doesn't that don't exist. You don't have to take my word for it. What's illegal? The the attorney Daniel Maher and and uh, Edward Riley at the United States Securities Commission filed a complaint against Hal D. Mintz and Savvy Management, case number 2-23-CV-3201, the, the commission, the SEC, files against Hal D. Mintz on Fisher Island on Miami Beach, Savvy Management out of Spicewood, Texas, this complaint arises from a long-running fraudulent scheme involving abusive naked short selling, order mismarking, and other violative trading or organized by the defendants. Two years. The defendant's fraudulent scheme repeatedly circumvented trading rules involving at least 10 issuers. In this case, uh, Ms. DeMar said it's just one issuer. It's easy to follow, and it's only a week of trading. This is over years here. Um, at least 10 issues on behalf of two private funds. The defendant's fraudulent schemer involved at least two forms of abusive trading. First, the defendants knowingly or recklessly mismarked sales of securities as quote unquote long, even though the sales did not qualify as long sales because the funds did not own and were not deemed to own the securities being sold and did not have a net long position in the securities being sold. Collective audience, 60,000 shares versus 25 million pummeling the stock market. It's only 10, one, to, one week to 10 days of trading should be able to track. As a result, the, de the defendants, this is in the savvy uh, management case, defendants should have marked those sales as quote unquote short. Failing to mark the sales correctly was a violation of applicable order marking rules. 
because defendant sales were actually short sales that they tried to disguise as long sales, defendants had not, quote unquote, located paren, i.e. borrowed, comma, arranged to borrow, comma, or had reasonable grounds to believe that the securities could be borrowed, close paren. They had not located the shares that, that they sold. The sales further failed to comply with the locate requirements of Reg Show. 17 CFR squiggle 24.2, 24.200-squiggle 204.204. Secondly, the defendants engaged in additional abusive trading by marking and selling shares short when they knew or were reckless in not knowing that they had not borrowed or located the shares. These trades also failed to comply with the locate requirements of regulation show. Further, in each in instance, defendants additionally failed to make timely delivery of shares. Remember, T plus two. T plus two. Their trading also constituted, I hate this term because it sounds like a strategy, not a crime, uh, constituted quote unquote naked short selling, which was a further violation of Reg Show. Defendants engaged in this fraudulent trading scheme because it was more profitable than following order marking and locate rules. Defendants would not have been able to carry out their short sales and thus could not have profited as they did if they had followed the rules governing long and short sales. And I hope she, Elizabeth DeMars, is aware of all this. This is the SEC. This isn't me. As a result of their misconduct, defendants attained at least $2 million in ill-gotten trading profits for themselves and their private funds. The only thing that the lawyers here don't understand Daniel Maher and Edward Riley, perhaps this trading made $2 million in that, those funds, but the documents, the notes, allowed their friends to flood the market with tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of shares, probably taking out, in the case uh, of collective audience, they took out 125, I don't know if they took it all out, but they caused the destruction from 25 of 125 million in market cap. They did take most of that out for themselves. So that's not going to show up in the in the smiling face two hedge funds uh, balance sheets. It's going to show up in the criminal LLCs behind them who they're in cahoots with and probably get a bounty and probably get a bit of the profits. No one understands that. As soon as ASPA said, all right, we'll talk to you, they started selling stock. Now, they didn't want to kill the price. When the stock ran to 38, they definitely started selling stock that didn't exist. Hey, they're good clients. They've always been good for it before. We know they have this toxic note. We can cover it later. The strategy always works, and the behind brokers are greedy for the fees, the commissions, and they don't want to lose the client. I hope Elizabeth DeMars recognizes, along with, I know Brent does, that Brent's son, who's on the board, that these hedge funds are just smiling faces in front of this cr criminality. They need to go to sources of financing who are not pimps, drug dealers, and other scum of the earth. 
Okay. On occasion, defendants in the Sabi case, in the Sabi case, defendants use their violative sales to deflate artificially the price at which the defendants were able to convert their security stock. Well, this is where the lawyers get literal and they don't see the massive selling going on. And the whole goal is to one, cause reverse splits, cause the stocks to be seller boxed, which they're trying to do to CAUD now. They're going to try to get it under a dollar. It's at 192. I don't think they can go much lower because clearly by this appointment, the company is fighting back. And this isn't the only uh, 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 bow in their quiver. Uh, they're not bow, arrow in their quiver. Defendants took multiple steps to conceal their fraudulent scheme and misconduct. They knew or were reckless in not knowing their conduct violated rules requiring traders to properly mark long sales and short sales and to obtain locates for short sales. Defendants repeatedly made false statements to brokers executing their trades, including falsely representing that they had located shares for their short shares when in fact they did not. The same thing happened here in collective audience. As well, the defendants repeatedly submitted fraud, fraudulent order instructions to the brokers identifying their shares as long in an attempt to disguise their naked short sale. That's their criminal short sales and their short sales for which they had not located shares when they knew that they were required to identify these shares as short sales. But for these representations, the brokers would not have executed these trades since they failed to comply with Reg Show. Those are two lawyers that believe that brokers are clean. There's plenty of broker dealers, Reed Alpine, that would execute the trades. How do you explain violating cease and desist 35,000 times in one year? Okay, in addition, um, in additional attempts to hide their failure to obtain locates, Defendants in some in instances would acquire the required the stock after their short sales, typically purchasing the stock from the issuer or otherwise acquiring it through conversion of securities, toxic notes, warrants. Defense, defendants knew or were reckless in not knowing that these practices fail to comply with applicable trading rules, which require, with very narrow exceptions, which are not applicable here, the rules require a short seller to locate the stock prior to the short sale. Prior to the short sale, I'll get a computer so I can show these more clearly. While defendants were awful, often able to conceal from the market their fraudulent trading schemer, on some occasions, defendants were unable to deliver securities in time to cover their short sales, causing, quote, fails to deliver. Each instance in which the defendants mismarked long sales and short sales without locates resulted in fails to deliver. The defendant's conduct here constituted naked short selling, illegal short selling, uh, selling shares that don't exist, counterfeiting. As a result of the conduct described above and more fully 
below, defendants violated section blah, blah, of the Securities and Exchange Act of 1934, rules and rules and, and sections and sections under the Investment Advisors Act of 1940, and of rules, and mints aided and embedded in those violations. Without an injunction, without action by the SEC, the defendants are likely to continue to violate federal securities laws. The SEC seeks permanent injunctions, disgorgement of ill-gotten gains derived by the conduct, and pre-judgment interest and civil money penalties. Now, the, the thing to understand here, the lawyers will settle for a couple of million dollars. Um, I don't know the 10 stocks that they destroyed, but their buddies offshore, their buddies here onshore, probably took hundreds of millions of dollars, maybe not billions of dollars out of the market cap using these, these uh, 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 toxic notes, dilutive notes, destructive notes, criminal notes, which have conversion features and warrants or and then stock at the prime at the uh, prime broker which they can go claim all of these strategies to give cover to the criminals to show their prime brokers hey we got you, the pri we've got your risk prime broker hedged it might take us 6 months but we've got it hedged it's all a nod and a wink to a blind bat amongst all these criminals. And what the SEC is going after is a pimple on, a, on an elephant's ass com uh, compared to what is really being defrauded. And I hope uh, uh, this extraordinarily talented Elizabeth DeMars uh, with proven experience can see in the last week and a half of trading, that it wasn't just the two hedge funds and their criminal, however many clients, it was multiplied out across many uh, LLCs, their buddies, their criminal uh, opportunistic shorts offshore, they all ganged on. So in the case of collective industries by my audience, by my count, it's at least 125 million ripped off. But when the lawyers looked in and into it and they looked to those two hedge funds, they'll probably only find, if they find anything, small amounts, not the 120 million. So what Elizabeth DeMars has to see with her experience, and Brent's son, of course, sees it, and the rest of the board has to see. Bottom line, do not deal, do business with the smiling faces on Wall Street. Do not do a toxic convertible note with VWAP, back, backward-looking formulas, words like above market, tranches of financing, warrants, all of that provides cover to the criminals on a scale unimaginable because Gary Gensler doesn't enforce any rules. Why? Because it helps Goldman Sachs. And I don't think uh, Elizabeth DeMars is going to be sucking up to Goldman Sachs. I don't think so. She's got a, a, a tremendous track record. All right, um, they talk about the jurisdiction. Hal Mintz is 52, residents of Miami. Can you afford to live in Miami? Savvy Management is a Delaware LLC, uh, Saddle River, New Jersey. Uh, they had the Savvy Health. They had several other funds that he set up. Um Palo Alto, Washington. Um, okay, Ray, background on Reg Show. 
Regulatory requirements applicable to short sales of equity securities are generally found in Reg Show, which the Commission adopted to address its concerns regarding persistent fails to deliver and potentially abusive naked short selling. A naked short, a criminal short, a counterfeiting generally refers to selling short without having borrowed or arranged to borrow securities to make delivery to the buyer within the standard settlement period, T plus two. All sellers of securities sh should promptly deliver or arrange for delivery of securities and all buyers of securities have the right to expect prompt delivery of securities permit uh, purchase, except if you're you or I, uh, Gary Gensler doesn't look out for it's right there. Reg show. It's right here in this filing by the SEC in enacting reg show. The commission was concerned about the negative effect that fails to deliver may have on markets and shareholders. Is that a time to say no shit, Sherlock? For example, large and persistent fails to deliver may deprive shareholders of the benefits of ownership. No shit, Sherlock? NSS? Such as voting and lending and sellers that fail to deliver securities on settlement date may attempt to use this additional freedom to engage in trading activities which improperly depresses the price of the security, NSS. Okay, I'll stop. It, it goes on and on. But I'll stop at this comment and then we'll look to hang up. Uh, on Reg Show, before accepting a short... <coughs> sell order or effecting a short sale for its own account, rule, 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 the broker dealer must borrow the securities, enter into a bona fide arrangement to borrow the securities, or have reasonable grounds to believe that the securities can be borrowed so they can be delivered on settlement date, T plus two. This provision is generally referred to as the locate requirement under regulation show. The source of the locate must be documented. Everything I, I constantly say, I, I sometimes lose my temper. Attorneys Daniel Maher, and Edward Riley have put forth in this SEC complaint. What they don't, these two attorneys, I'm sure they're young and they want a position at a law firm or at a, a brokerage firm. Um, they don't understand, and I hope Elizabeth DeMars does, and, and, and I think she'll be able to, she's, she's obviously a quick study. Um, uh, they they miss that this is just a small part of the defra of the defrauding that goes on from the UK, from Germany, from Switzerland, and and onshore. And um, if this is millions of dollars, the offshore defrauding based on these the cover these notes pr provide is the entire market cap the the racketeering criminal coalition wants to destroy the entire steal the entire market cap of the companies it's orchestrated it's fraud it's effective it wins and the start of it and I hope the board here sees it, is you have to recognize the problem and never take financing that includes paying in tranches, backward-looking pricing formula, uh, 
putting stock at a transfer agent that the hedge funds can claim <clears throat> warrants above market because it's not just the smiling face who you went to school with. It's going to allow tens, twenties, hundreds of criminals <coughs> cover with their shady attorneys to sell tens of millions, if not hundreds of billions of shares of stock that don't exist. All right, I'm going to stop talking about that. I'll try to answer some of your questions, but I'm going to sign up, uh, sign off. <coughs> Because I'm not, I gotta drink some water. Finger went from zero to 300 000, million, thousand. That's amazing. Uh, Finger traded 40 grand in the hour. Good morning, John Crossan. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's sunny here, but it's a little cool. On the phone with E Trade, getting alive. Finger, uh, long term stock. Yes, I agree with that. B, I don't have any, uh, I have one Twitter account and they've suspended it because uh, Sam Chung at Lynn Partners put in a claim saying I had viol violated a copyright of her photograph, which she put out on the Lynn Partners website for years, I assume, um, to attract business. And it never said copyright on that photograph. At least I never saw it. I don't know what that says. Stephen. I voted for Donald J. Trump in the, the election he ran against Hillary Clinton. I, vo I voted for Donald J. Trump when he ran against Joe Biden. I guess, I guess irony is not a word or sarcasm is not a word in your, your, your literal when you listen to things. Stephen Karras, it's my opinion that YouTube um, is run by highly educated, probably mostly women, with some men who want that those women's approval, affection, and promotion who have a, an agenda that is left-wing leading, feminist, and uh, could be almost socialist slash Marxist, and they have the power over this channel. So if I talk about, in a positive way, Donald Trump, and a negative way, Joe Biden, oh, no, no, you can't do that. Joe Biden is um, um, uh, for blacks, for African Americans, for Hispanics, for Latinx, for uh, the poor and downtrodden. And Joe Biden is, he never was a misogyn misogynist. There's no evidence that what Tara Reid has said occurred in the Senate when she was 21 years old as a legal aid ever happened. And there's there's no evidence that the crime bill, which was written by Joe Biden, who he's proud of, was a racist bill. It did not destroy families who happened to have color darker than mine for two or three generations, for three strikes you're out, for minor drug violations, Bill Clinton put it into, into effect. And his wife went out campaigning saying, these are animals. These aren't normal human beings. I'm paraphrasing. 
But Stephen Karras, if I go on and on about that, they're not going to let me do it. So I praise Joe Biden, the single most uh, popular president in the history of the United States. He won a fair election. He got 81 million votes. His appointments have been brilliant. He has never committed fraud. Donald Trump is under 91 indictments. Donald, fraud, Donald Trump is a misogynist. Look at the woman who accused him at some time, she doesn't remember when, and she doesn't remember exactly how, of assaulting her, him, he, him of assaulting her at Berghoff, Berghoff Newman sometime five to 10 years ago. I mean, Donald Trump is obviously a misogynist. Look at Donald Trump. He did more to help African-American colleges and fund them than Barack Obama. Donald Trump did more to correct the, the prison system as it relates to African-American uh, and minority Americans than Barack Obama. But Donald Trump is clearly a racist. Donald Trump, grandchildren are Jewish, but Donald Trump is clearly an anti-Semite. Donald Trump is unhinged. He's going to take us into World War III. We need to put the man who had the single best record of foreign um, affairs in the Senate in the White House he will never get us into a land war in Eastern Europe with the world's largest uh, holder of nuclear weapons by, by record. He will never get us in an expanded war in the Middle East. Donald Trump doesn't know what he's doing. And you got to pick the guy with 81 million votes that's not going to get us into friction and trouble with China. So, Stephen Karras, as long as I have this YouTube channel, I'm riding with Biden. If I haven't made it clear to you, look up I-R-O-N-Y. Look up uh, sarcasm. Look up um, uh, Mark Anthony's speech after uh, Julius Caesar was killed. Friends, Romans, com countrymen, lend me your ears. For Brutus is an honorable man. So are they all, all honorable men. That you, that statement, one, makes me think that you haven't been paying attention. Two, maybe, maybe you don't get it. And three, it almost makes me mad. Thanks, low out, pure saving bucks, indefinitely. Well, Bader, I think what's going on is the Fed is allowing selected banks to make new loans at higher interest rates so that their blended portfolio against the idiocy of lending money out at a percent or 2% long-term, assuming inflation would never come back. This is what happens when you get woke boards and you, and you promote people checking ESG boxes. You get idiots. Although, you know, the Fed's done it too. And uh, uh, big banks have done it too. All right, I'm going to uh, go quickly. I, I don't want to. I, I, 
I don't want to be on much longer. CAUD is 191, and it is a crime. Uh, E-Trade continues to lie about the dividends. That's the whole point, Hank. They GTII issued a special dividend as restricted shares that has to go through the transfer agent to try to cause the system to recognize the problem, to acknowledge the problem, to either make the choice to commit fraud with the criminals or buy in the stock. So it's beautiful what's happening. Okay, I got back to where I was. Let's come down to see. Um, no, you did not. Um, MVP chair. I'm not going to read that out loud. But I never said that. So I don't know if you were listening. But I never said that. I will restate MVB chair. I could show it to you, but you can look it up yourself. On September 11th, Finger announced a $300 million shelf registration, which stated in it that, the, that Univest was their banker. On the next, on the third, that was a Monday. On the Thursday, they announced it in an 8K to everyone. The next week after you and your criminals sold it off, they stated they're not raising money at $4, $5, $6. Then you and your criminals, Crappy Vera and Michael Dion put out a report. There's no uh, visible path to profit profitability. Finger, in fact, according to information and belief, three weeks ago crossed to positive cash flow. And since September 11th, has been working with Univest. In my judgment, they're working on something big. Why would it be $300 million if it weren't big? And I think it will be priced, if there's a financing, much higher than four, five, and six dollars. Why? Because Finger put out a press release saying they have no intention of raising money down here. Finger got rid of the liars at Lind Partners with the help of West Christian, Lind Partners didn't want to take their money back with penalties at the beginning of the year. And Finger Motion has cash. They have revenue that just keeps growing, almost like a T-bill. It's so safe, safer than a T-bill. So no, MVB chair, you did not hear me correctly. Hey, Pedro Zears. I'll put it up without reading it. I'll put it up without reading it. I like, I love that idea, Moody Waters. I love that idea. Crowd, I love it. I will, I will, I wrote down the gentleman's name, Michael Granite, and I'll try to figure out price, how we could do it. I love that idea, Moody Waters. I would want to do an ad um, while Congress is in session for at least a week, if not two weeks, in the Washington Post and the Washington Times. And maybe uh, the Hill would be better. Maybe the Hill is cheaper. When I went through Congress, they always had the Post, the Times, well, if you went to a Republican office, uh, and you would see the Hill. There might be others. They had the Wall Street Journal, but I think that's probably out of I love that idea. Okay, I see that I'm, I'm almost... No worries, MV Chair, you misheard. I miscommunicated back to you. I fully accept your apology. Um, uh, and no harm, no foul. I just, I wanted to just be as clear as I could. <laughs> that, and I didn't want to repeat it. So there's not some quote of me out there on the Twitterati pages that I said it. So anyway, 
All right, I'm going to sign off. I wish everybody the best. Um, uh, please pray for two things. Jenny L. Please pray for Jenny L. and her family. One and two, let's pray for world peace. And if you want to make it specific, let, let's pray for all of the babies, whoever they are, both sides, three sides, in all war zones on earth. And then um, I thank everybody for joining. Um, um, we'll get through this, and I'll catch you da on down the highway. <laughs> you were definitely clear. <laughs> See, you got a good sense of humor, MV, MVP chair. Humor is always a good thing. Um, except for not legal advice. All right. Ciao. Okay.